Hey guys, John here from ContraBIM, and the last video that I did, I got a ton of different questions on how I was producing the rough carpentry or timber stud framing in this uh, residential uh, project that I was demonstrating uh, the ghosting graphic overrides on. So in this video, what I want to do is go through and uh, just kind of talk about some of the philosophies and approaches that I put into place on this. And then uh, we'll do a real quick modeling exercise to kind of demonstrate how this stuff can be put into place. But before we do that, uh, make sure to uh, like this video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed up already uh, it does help me out a lot and we're trying to build this channel to reach a larger audience so yeah go ahead and subscribe and uh, it would mean a lot to me to have you part of the ContraBIM team here so okay so let's go ahead and kind of talk big picture here with this framing now um, when going to this level of detail with a wood stud framing I would consider this to be like a uh, like a trade level or almost fabrication level of detail. Um, now certainly there's more uh, details that we could add to this such as different you know connections and anchor bolts and we could continue to build on this but just adding the stud framing itself is uh, what I would consider uh, going to that trade level of detail. Now to show you how I break up my uh, different view map drawings here. Um, let's just talk a little bit about where the design content goes. So um, design here within the ContraBIM template, this is the ContraBIM residential template by the way, um, design is typically going to be focused here one underneath this design architectural uh, layout here. We also have some views for structural, electrical, plumbing, electric, uh, HVAC, um, and then we kind of start switching over to some different uh, modes here. We have a reference and review mode, which is all about just linking drawings in either in DWG or PDF format. We have a construction modeling mode, which really starts shaping up the model for uh, different systems, whether it's substructure foundations, uh, superstructure in the shell, uh, interiors, MEP services, uh, lots of different drawings here set up for kind of preparing for construction. And then we have this next mode, which is really what I want to get to here, which is talking about our trade drawings. So within here, we have these all broken up and you can see that we have a rough carpentry level of detail, which then allows us to focus our model in and isolate just the framing members of our project. So, um, so with this particular view here, this, uh, this rough carpentry, um, so this is set up with, uh, essentially just the same layered combination that we're seeing here, um, where we are essentially tagging anything that's rough carpentry in this case. Uh, the 0610, by the way, is a CSI master format code. Um, so all, everything in our, in this, uh, level of detail here is going to be turned on onto a trade level of detail layer on rough carpentry and so that's where we are going to be filtering this through. Now what's important with this is that we have a layer priority that is going to be separated off from our other wall uh, elements here. So um, we still have our walls turned on in this case and so we can see that here. Uh, our walls are going to be drawn on a uh, exterior wall layer, which is based off our B1011. That's our uniformat layer system, which is what gets driven into both design as well as construction modeling. And then we differentiate going from design into more of the trade coordination by switching over to a parallel layer, layer system for our shop drawings or trade drawings. So that's number one here. Is, and that's how we can get all of these model elements to really kind of act independently from the design layers and gives us the flexibility of having additional layers to be able to turn on in this case. And um, yeah, you can still see all the design layers being kind of ghosted out in this, uh, this format, um, but you can see all of our uh, stud framing uh, just shining right through. Okay, so that is kind of the first setup here for how we set up our our framing. So we have our ground level. You can see all of our different studs here. You can see our headers are noted here. Um, we have our top plate, which is going to have our framing on the roof, or sorry, on the, the rafters. And then we, of course, have our roof framing as well. And so all of these different items are going to be assigned to our trade uh, 
report or sorry the trade layer for rough carpentry and so that's how we isolate it okay so next up let's go in and let's just do kind of like a uh, a little bit more of a focused view here of just one particular location so we'll just isolate here into one elevation and let's talk about some of the different framing members that we have here starting from the bottom so we have here a uh essentially what is a bottom plate or a sill plate is what it may often be called and so we actually one one other thing here is we have a rough carpentry override turned on so we can turn this off and you can actually see that these are just uh set up with our base surfaces for just you know a wood material um which is which is fine it's kind of nice to be able to switch back and forth here but one cool thing with our graphic overrides is we have this set up where we can go through and itemize things based off the different framing types so you'll see here with our different with our diagram that we have a bottom plate or a sill plate um actually sorry we have a, our bottom plate our sill plate is actually going to be right below the window here, so it's a little bit tough to see in this case, um, but that's going to be our sill plate below the window. We have our cripples, which is going to be below our sill plate as well as above our headers. We have our trimmer, which is going to be this purple member, which is going to come up and support our headers over either doors or windows. And then we have our king studs as well. And then, of course, we have just our highlight for our rough carpentry, which is going to be going through and picking up any other framing member that is not in one of these overrides. So that's how we're setting this up. And then, of course, we're applying our ghost all and some of our other cut transparent fills um or cut fills there so that's how we set this up and then all we need to do is when we are modeling we just kind of pick up our settings here and as long as we have our uh our ids turned on to the right format here then it makes it really easy to get these graphic overrides to work so okay um so that is how these are set up once again we have our bottom plate we have our cripples here in yellow um we have our trimmer at our windows so that's what really is is setting our rough opening we have our sill plate here we have our headers of course in blue and so these are going to vary in size and depth um, depending on how large of an open opening that we have to deal with and then uh, of course we have our king stud and then uh, over here we also have some blocking or fire stopping and our normal studs so that is the configuration for a stud wall here so let's do a little modeling exercise here and so what i think we'll do is let's just take our slab i'm going to just pick up our slab and we'll create just like a little um maybe we'll do it up over here let's just create like a quick little like adu unit um so one thing i'll do is i'll just kind of set our same offsets here we'll make this the same width and let's just draw up a little adu um okay so there we go let's take our exterior walls and we'll just essentially just draw our walls out oh uh, let's see do i have this i have this going in the wrong direction we can set this to the core outside okay um and actually in this case how do i have it over here i want to double check to see okay so my slab is going to the outside of our sheathing so we will just make a quick offset here um where we are going to offset this the width of our sheathing in this case so always good to get these set up before you go too far so we will offset all of these in just uh, one half inch okay so now we have our slab and our sheathing right at those same points which is good um okay so next up let's get we just drop in a door so i'm just going to pick up a door we can have this facing outside but swinging in we can pick up a few different windows here so let's just pick up this window and yeah, maybe we'll squeeze uh, let's squeeze it in over on the side here 
it's a little bit too large for right there so we'll center this up there we go we can add a window there um, we can pick up some of these other little bit smaller windows and uh, work with these so maybe we'll add one here um, <clears throat> maybe we'll add one over here um, we can pick up an interior wall so we'll pick this up and let's just create a small little segment here for like a restroom okay so building up a little ADU here let's just see how this looks in 3d so of course we have this all ghosted and wireframed um, we can turn this off and we can see that it's still just turned on as wireframe but we can switch this all the way over to just like our exterior view and, and there we go so we have our little building uh, going on you can actually see here um, if we turn off our finishes so we see it without finishes here you can actually see that we have a few different layers here and we actually already have some studs uh, set up in here so that's that's kind of cool that's just the texture um, that we have assigned to those so um, that's another way of representing this but again this is simply just a texture and there are no actual studs there just want to make that very very clear um, but okay let's go back and let's just start doing some modeling here on our rough carpentry so first thing that I want to do is let's go in and um, we can actually do it this way I'm going to just kind of marquee this area and let's just pick up our uh, bottom plate to begin with and so now we can just go through and start modeling so um, we can do this here in 2d and oh you know what one other thing I want to point out so we can do that here in 3d is with all of these different studs that we have here I am using a complex profile for these. So it's the same profile for both uh, the, the column elements as well as the beam elements. And the reason for this, um, if we turn off this graphic override here, might help with this, is it's going to actually give us this little bit of definition that you see here. And so that way when you see things in elevation, um, it will actually prevent these from merging together so that you can actually see these different uh, stud configurations here you can see the difference between our like our headers and our um, our king studs and our trimmers here so it does make a big difference here if we could just go to our elevation like our um, in this case we can go to any of these elevations like a south elevation should do it um, you'll you'll see that we're actually seeing this additional definition coming through here because we're using that complex profile and so just by having that little bit of a notch on the corner there if I just pull up this uh, this profile um, oh, where is it usually you can just jump right in from that setting there but if we go to our two by profile here so you can actually see that that is not one of them. So that was one of the others. So this is a two by detailed. Um, so right click on this edit composite profile. You can see here that it's just a small little block with some notching here. And then we have some uh, ability to stretch these in either direction to get the sizing of the framing that we want. So having this little bit of definition here, it does increase our uh, our polygon count a little bit but I think it's worth it on a project this size um, just because it gives us that ability to really uh, see the definition between these different connections so just wanted to make that point because that is something that is uh, definitely a bit important to this workflow um, okay so with that let's go back and let's start modeling so we have our beam tool we already have our bottom plate uh, set up and turned on so we can just go over here and we are looking for some points to uh, snap to essentially um, let's just check our settings here actually with this with these walls turned on as a wireframe it does tend I find well actually no we can we can get our snap points here so 
with our beam tool, let's just start our modeling here. Um, it does create just a little bit of a challenge here sometimes when trying to find our working points. So I like using guidelines just to create this little uh, point that we can snap off of. And then from here, we can just take this. And because these are sill plates, we can actually just kind of go starting and stopping all the way through. And we can quickly just get our sill plates working. Sorry, not our sill plates. I keep confusing the, uh, the naming here. So these are bottom plates. And so we can just carry this all the way through. And then at this last one here, we can actually find our little working point over on that side. And if we were a little bit off on this one, we can find it by snapping right over there. So, okay. So we did our exterior. Um, one thing here that I want to do is we need to add in a door. So let's just pick up settings here. Let's add a door, kind of swing in in that direction. And okay, so um, let's finish this out. Oop, that's not what we wanted. Let's pick up our bottom plate. Um, we can just kind of restart this at the correct sizing. Again, we're looking for that work point here to snap to. And then we can always take these items and just kind of copy them around at the same time. So lots of different ways of doing this. Um, but the main thing that we want to do is be sure that we are just keeping things inside of that stud cavity there. So, okay, there we go. We've now dropped all of these in. We can see them coming through in 3D, which is great. And all right, so next up here. So we can um, we can continue on with this. Uh, let's go and we can actually just pick up some settings here. Um, so there's some different ways of doing this as well. So we could go through and if we take a look here at our uh, top plate, uh, typically our top plate is going to have a double stud condition. Um, and so what we could do is we could just kind of pick up our settings on that. We can come over here. We want to just make sure that we are set to that elevation. Um, so we can adjust this after the fact. We can actually even just take these beams here and we can draw this in, in this case, uh, just using another method. So we can draw them in like this. And so those are going to essentially become our top elevation here. And so we can just quickly draw these through. It's okay to use these different geometry, geometry methods, but by doing that, we should be able to quickly um, see those points, although right now we have, we're not seeing them. So that's one of those cases where we undo, undo, redo, redo, and then um, perhaps in this case we had our gravity turned on um, or just didn't recognize our, our height here. So let's set this to our current story and we want this to be probably like eight foot at least. And so now let's just do another little check here. And okay, so there we are. I'm going to do a marquee, grab all of these beams here, and we'll just kind of get these situated to the exact right elevation. So I'm just going to take them, snap them up there, and then we're because all of these are kind of a double scenario, we're just going to copy them down. And there we go. So now we have our uh, top plates uh, turned on there. Um, I don't think we actually had a top plate uh, override here in our uh, graphic override, but that's okay. Um, so now we can just go through and we, we know the height that we are working with. And so we can really just start by going through and uh, working through some of these examples. So wherever we have a window or a door just on, you know, base rule, you know, th none of these elements are too wide. Maybe we'll have, you know, a four by four header here, uh, maybe like a four by six or four by eight over that window. Um, but we can just start by kind of going through. And I often like just kind of having these rigged up where we can grab our different our different elements here. We can grab a header um, and we can just simply 
start going through and copying these items around. So I'm going to start over on this side. I'm going to snap it right here. We're going to rotate this around. I'm going to take this beam, which is our header, and um, we'll resize that in a moment. But I like just doing a lot of mirroring when I'm doing this. So I'm going to take that particular trimmer and the header there. And what we're looking for here is just the center line on that door. And we'll just want to double check to make sure that we are right on. So that would be our center point. And then we can just take this header and bring it back and snap it right there. So uh, if we wanted to reduce our size to like a four by four here, we would just change our settings here. So no problem. And then from here, we can just take this and make sure that we have it adjusted to the right elevation. Um, so of course we want to do this for both our our trimmers as well as our our um, our header. So we can see here our rough opening there. So we can just take this and shrink down our size, snap to that point. And so that's what we want our um, sizing to be is to set to that rough opening size on our door. So, okay, we can take this, drop it down. And so we are starting to uh, kind of be in business here. So, um, so with all these windows, it is nice if you have all of your tops set to the right, to the same elevation. So we can change some of these settings here. Um, and of course this can all vary, but um, let's just go through, we'll pick up our different window settings here. And for the moment, let's just uh, kind of set these at a standard height. So we can change our settings here. So our header uh, to wall base, and then we can just set these all to six foot eight um, should do it for us. So let's see, header six foot eight. I think maybe one of these was a little bit higher. Yeah, so that one was slightly higher. So we can just make a quick adjustment. Maybe we already had it at the right elevation. Hmm. Anyway, so at this point, just start going through. It seems like I got a little off on this one. I think my mirrored representation was good to begin with. So take these and just simply start copying them around. So um, once you kind of get the hang of these, then it starts going much quicker. So like just to show for as an example, if we start just taking these and snapping them in one direction over here, then we can really speed this up. So there we go. We can mirror it across to the other side. We can take these and bring them down. I guess we didn't put a window in right there, but we can snap it here, rotate around, push this in, and quickly just kind of start mirroring these around. So we can do the same thing here for our, our door framing. So it's just kind of a lot of uh, just going through and uh, making some copies. So that point there just isn't the right point that I want. So in this particular case, you can see where our door frame is and then we have a little bit of a gap in there if we turn off our overrides. Um, it's actually not too bad doing it in a view like this either. Um, it's pretty pretty easy to, to see. It actually, the visibility on this is a little bit um, easier at this rate, but we don't have kind of that graphical feedback of knowing which item is which when we copy this around. So when we when we turn this on like this, then we get this additional feedback, which is definitely kind of nice. Um, so yeah, with that, let's just continue on. We can, uh, I'm always looking for a snapping point here We can take this, rotate it up, offset it in. mirror it around 
And okay, so that would be essentially all of our different headers. If that's the height that we are going with, um, maybe we'll pick up one of these windows, which are like one of the higher windows. So we can also just take this entire assembly. That would be a little bit easier method. Um, but let's place our window first and then we'll copy that over. So looking to pick up this window. There we go. We can drop it in right here. And then because we've already done that, we can take this entire assembly, which is nice. And then we're essentially just looking for any point that we can copy from. So this work point over here should do it just fine. And we can snap it to that same exact point there. And then we are done for that particular window. So these other ones, we need to go through and just get our headers set up. So if we know it's the same size header, then we can simply just uh, uh, stretch the length on these. If we want to increase our size on these, then we can just uh, make that adjustment. So for a window like this, we probably want to be either a four by six or potentially even like a four by eight. Um, set this to our height and we'll go in and adjust that one. Um, that one should already be set. Um, something like this is an interior, so you may not even need a header. You can put a just a stud running across the top. Um, this one over here will probably be the same size. So snap that, rotate around. And so you can see that we can quickly just get these things rolling. Um, next up here, let's talk about some of our uh, regular uh, studs. So we're going to turn off our true line weight. And so with this here, so with uh, 16 inch spacing on center, I typically would like taking our first one out. And then from here, you can just uh, either copy from this point over so that actually puts us past the corner. So in this case, there's a lot of different ways to frame a corner stud, but we can just kind of work with these. Um, obviously we want a stud in the corner here. And often what you'll do is you'll have like a half stud here and then you can rotate this around and kind of come up with a corner configuration. So something like this is often done um, there's certainly other ways of doing this as well. You could, um, let's look at another condition perhaps. Um, so let's just take, we'll just take all of these. We can swing it around over here. We can rotate it in. Um, you could probably do this where you are rotating this one and having one go sideways. Um, you could have one over here. Um, there's just a lot of different ways of doing these corners, corner condition, conditions. Um, but at the end of the day, we want, I mean, it's, it's definitely useful to have just for the purpose of, you know, having something to nail to. Um, I like doing the configuration like this, where we kind of use this as a, a center line point. And so that way you have, you know, full corner blocking for your, your drywall there. So, and then from here, we can just take this and we can simply just distribute. Uh, we can increment, or sorry, we can spread 16 inches on center. And we just take this and run with it. So we can run with it up to this point. Um, once we get to here, though, we want to probably just take that and then we'll pull it out. And we can do some reconfiguration uh right here so we'll just add in some additional studs we can take one of these rotate it around real quick do the same thing where we're just kind of setting up our corners and then we're good to just take it and run so run to this corner we can set this up as our as our corner rotate one around so it's kind of fun once you kind of get in the rhythm of this so i definitely this is one of those things that is fun to do and just you kind of go through and see how fast you can actually get things going. Um, so just kind of a combination of offsetting and copying and uh, yeah, getting it all set up. So um, we can take this one from this direction. So I just, you know, pull this through. This last one here I'll take and I'll pull it back. This one maybe we'll just kind of copy. 
Um, okay, so you can see once we get flowing, it doesn't take too long to finish this out. Um, definitely want to maintain our spacing there, so we'll leave that one. Um, you can take this, probably put at least an intermediate stud right here. Uh, in some cases, you may want to actually trim out on the outside here as well. So you may want to do that. Uh, so always good to consult your structural engineer's details. Um, so how far is this? So this is, we go 14 inches here. We can bring one of these to the corner. We can copy one to the corner. We can rotate it around and quickly just fill this out. So often I'll just start here, I'll copy it off, so 16 inches, and then continue on. So very quick once you start getting this set up. And what's great about this is all this content is easily quantified. Um, with There are some other ways of doing some of this uh, with different, uh, there's the object tool part of the goodie package for doing wall framing but it tends to uh, just be really kind of difficult to work with to be honest so okay so there we go we have our kind of base framing set up here uh, it definitely didn't take too long you can see how quick it is once we get rolling um, we're missing a few elements in this case um, so we would have our I don't know what happened to our sill plate there but let's go through and pick up just kind of a quick configuration here. So we want to pick up our cripple. Um, there's going to be one that's low and one that's high. So selected, I'm just kind of rotating through here. I want to pick up our sill plate. So let's just grab both of these. I'm going to copy them over. We'll give it a little rotation. We can actually just kind of set this up on the outside here. So you can pull this in, snap it there, bring our sill, or sorry, our cripple over. Um, we'll want to adjust our heights here, but let's just take this and drop it in. And then we can really move quickly with these. So we'll just take this, snap it up, stretch our height so in a scenario like this uh, depending on the spacing we have two foot 11 so in a case like this I might just um, take this and do like a uh, like a, a distribute to one thing that yeah we'll do another version on on the top here but let's just finish this one out so distribute one less and we'll just space two out in this location here and of course we don't need any sloping on that um, we can take this simply just copy it up snap it here in 3d drop it down and then in this case we can just do distribute three of them and we'll take it from that point all the way over to that point so i need to turn off that elevate setting okay so from here we got lots of options for how we can continue with this we can just take it do this in 3d snapping to that point rotate just want to double check make sure that we have it on that looks good so pull this up extend copy distribute or we can just spread and okay so copy so it's kind of fun to do these in 3d actually you just got to be careful that you're uh, you know keeping things in line with your wall and not getting outside of it There we go. So this one was nice because it already had those picked up. Um, and all right, so we just have one more. We could probably, 
I think this whole configuration is the same. I think we added the same size window over on that side. So let's just pick up all of these and we'll just copy it over from that particular point. And so I'm looking for snapping directly to here. I realized that I copied double headers. So in this case, we'll want to just delete one of those. Delete, and there we are. So that is pretty much it here for our, uh, our framing. Um, there's just a few other little loose ends that we can clean up, but for the most part, that's how you can approach uh, modeling stud framing. So um, definitely takes a little bit more time than say using like a plugin that's going to automatically generate for you, but it also gives you the flexibility and control to just go through and do these and set these up exactly how you want, which is nice. So, okay. You can see that we got a little bit of a an issue here on this particular one, six foot seven. Let, we can just take this window and stretch it. That one looks okay. That one looks good. This one over here. Okay, so that is uh, it for stud framing here. Um, if you have any questions on this, then just let me know. Leave it in the comment section. Again, if you like this type of content, then make sure to subscribe. I have considered uh, doing some training courses on model stud framing uh, like this. So if you're interested in that, then uh, just leave me a comment in the uh in the comment section and uh yeah we'll we'll kind of see about maybe building up a whole curriculum on uh how to set up these little bits of rigging um how to set up the different overrides we already talked about that a bit already um but yeah it's something that i enjoy doing uh it's fun to model in the framing fun to get this level of detail and it's really quite beneficial i would say for when you want to actually start coordinating uh different penetrations or locations of um like electrical devices. Um, like what, and what's cool about this is, you know, even though that we have this on a rough carpentry layer here, that's, you know, totally isolated on its own. We can start bringing some of this back into our design content and coordination views as well. So, um, for example, here we can go to like an electrical plan for like lighting and switching, and we can go to a view here that is going to include our studs. You can see them overridden in this case, but then you can actually just start kind of really coordinating where you are going to be placing these devices. So it does, uh, you know, take a little bit of time to add this in, but it's, uh, I think, worth it in my opinion. Um, after, of course, you've gone through and really coordinated your project and signed off the, the design intent. So you don't want to be adding all this detail until you uh, really know that your drawing is finalized. Uh, that way you don't spend a lot of rework going through making updates later on. So, um, okay, so that is it for now. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and picked up a few tips and tricks on uh, how to set this up on your own. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely, uh, we can do some more videos here on different framing methods. Um, and um, yeah, if you're interested in a course, then perhaps I'll put one together and uh, uh, have a little bit more structured learning and breaking this down so it's a little easier to understand. So, okay, with that, we'll wrap this one up here and uh, we'll catch you on another Contrabin video coming out very soon.